Namaste, my friend. Today I'm going to talk about asteroids, how we can analyze and interpret asteroids, and I'll use the Series 1.3 software to show you some ways that we do this. And asteroids have become increasingly important in astrology because at, it used to be back 20 or 30 years ago, you had basically three categories of objects astrologers would deal with, well, actually more than three, but you would have the sun and moon, category number one, you have the planets, that would be another category. And then you have pieces of rock out there, which would be the little asteroids. And then there are fixed stars, and, you know, you could get more technical about it and say there are comets and whatever. But as far as in our solar system, you had a pretty clear division between the sun and moon, um, the planets, and the asteroids. You know, geocentrically, that's what you see in the sky uh, as far as objects in our solar system. Well, now we've with more asteroids discovered, some of the asteroids are very much like planets, they're dwarf planets, so you have a more gradual spectrum of objects where it's not as clearly distinguished between planets and asteroids, and so that makes us need to think about these things, incorporate them, and just search around for how we're going to work with them. Okay, so I've got a list of ways we're going to work with asteroids. Uh, we'll put, you know, you put them in chart wheels, obviously, right? You put them in your chart just like anything else. You might want to have listings, especially that's important because there's so many of them. You might want to get some idea of how to interpret these things. Um, put them in your transits because that's always a nice thing to do, and I'll show that with what we call the timeline transits. Um, another way to look at transiting asteroids is to have an ephemeris of them. Um, so you don't have to go online or hunt around. If you have serious software, there's a very nice ephemeris to show you where the asteroids are. Um, and there's also the graphic ephemeris. And we'll also talk about astro maps. And you can do research with asteroids. So I'll go through these different ways that you can work with asteroids. Okay, so here we are in the Series 1.3 software. And we have a chart wheel. We have uh, the musician, singer, and pianist, and composer, Tori Amos, just to have somebody's chart up there. Okay, so there's her chart. We see here it tells us it's AA accuracy. It's from birth certificate. And we're interested in asteroids. So where do we start? Well, one place to start is start. You could put them in the chart wheel. So as usual, you can right-click. Right-click. Okay, and you've got your different chart wheel styles. And then you want to add something. What do you do? Click on Customize, right? If you're familiar with Sirius or you've watched your other videos, you've got the idea. You just, you know, right-click is a fast way to bring up what choices you have, and then you look for something like a Customize button. And, you know, it's pretty intuitive. Just use common sense. Take your time and look around. And if you look real carefully, you'll see there's a button here, Asteroids, Lots, Nodes. So these little buttons, you know, may not look like they're a very big deal. Um... But a lot of these little buttons are huge deals. So anyway, this you click on this little guy here. It opens up another little window. All these little windows are here so that it's interactive. You still see the actual chart wheel. So these are fun because they're interactive. You can pop things in and out of the wheel. So here are asteroids. Well, okay, click Eris. And where is Eris? Uh, there it is, Eris. Uh, in Aries near Jupiter. We could put Sedna in there. And so now we see, you know, Sedna in the wheel in, in late Aries. Um, so you can put them in the chart wheel uh, if you want to. There's a little checkbox here to use glyphs when available. Uh, you know, some astrologers have made glyphs for, for some of the asteroids. And uh, we see here that Eris has a glyph. In fact, Eris has four or five, if I remember, different possible glyphs. And in the settings for the program, which we can go to later, I don't think we'll bother to, but in the settings you can choose what glyph you want for for Eris. Also, you know, different people have different glyphs for Pluto, uh, and those are in the settings uh, for the whole program. But anyway, you can use the glyphs. I'm going to get rid of the glyphs because a lot of us aren't familiar with them, so I'll uncheck that, and E-R-I, you know, would obviously be Eris. Um, okay, well, so I've got these asteroids, Ixion, Varuna, Quaor. What if I have an asteroid that's not here and I want to do it? Well, you probably noticed the little change button. So I can click on change. I'll pick some asteroid, Hector. I probably wouldn't use that. And I'll change it. 
And then in this window, let me slide this down into the visible part of what you're looking at. I'm capturing just part of my um, screen here. Sometimes these windows go outside the little part I'm capturing. Anyway, so now it pulls up another window um, where you can select the asteroids. Now, I've got two choices at the top. Only asteroids included with Sirius, which is over a thousand asteroids. I think it's 1,400 or 1,500 asteroids that come with Sirius. Um, we also have four optional asteroid CDs that you can purchase. Um, the the that gives you uh, what almost forty thousand asteroids, if I remember right. Um, you can also download download asteroid ephemeris files. Uh, it's a little bit tedious, but it can be done that way. You don't have to pay for it. I'm not going to show all that right in this video. I just want to show you how you use these things. I can make more videos to show that. But if I click on include optional asteroids um, you know then I've got all these things listed here so let's see what other asteroid might I want I might want to put uh, I might want to just put Ceres without what we call the four major asteroids maybe just Ceres so I'll click on that it tells me the three letter abbrevi abbreviation will be CER so you could change that if you have two objects beginning with the same letters you need to make one different so you know which what they are and click OK and now this object has changed to series and I can check it uh, and I've put just series in there and since I don't have this thing checked to show the glyph it's just showing CER for series so anyway you've, you've got the idea you can put up to I think about 20 asteroids after you do that the chart wheel is going to be full uh, so you just go and change them to whatever you want. If I want Hygieia, click on it. I want Varuna, Ixion. Okay, so they're all in there. You get the idea. So putting asteroids in a chart wheel is obviously one thing to do. Well, this is interesting. Her moon is conjunct series very closely, uh, less than half a degree. 9 Libra 07, 9 Libra 35. So you can start seeing interesting things. Um, uh, you know, a lot of astrologers look at conjunctions. If you want to look at aspects, I could see that Sedna is trying her son. You know, if that might mean something. I could see what house it's in, etc. So you can put them in a wheel. It's one of the most obvious things to do. All right, so that's one thing to do, and you can put basically any asteroid in the wheel. If it's an asteroid that doesn't come with Sirius, uh, you can download it. You can purchase the optional asteroid CD. Um, and have access to basically any asteroid. If a large asteroid is discovered, we will add that to the free download um, so you can have it. I mean a very large, important one. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll keep you updated with anything that really significant that happens and you don't have to wait for a new version or something like that. So, asteroids are available. There you go. Now, what do you do if you have more than 20 asteroids? Well, then you'd need to do a, a by wheel. So there's two kinds of wheels. One wheel where you just put it right in the wheel with everything else, and another is a by wheel. And you could put some asteroids in the inner wheel, uh, say like Ceres if you wanted to, and the rest in a by wheel. So let me show you that. I'll go ahead and click Done, rather than Cancel, to save this. Uh, I'll click OK, Save and OK, and now I've got a wheel with these additional asteroids in there. It's great also for, um, you know, if you're writing articles or teaching and you want to put certain asteroids in there, uh, you can do that. Okay, and if you have more asteroids, you can do the by wheel, and I'll right-click, click on this, there are three tabs up here, the special tab, and select the asteroids wheel. So we have a special wheel in Sirius, just for asteroids, and here the asteroids are put around the outer ring um, and uh, the planets in the inner ring. Uh, and, and again, you would go to your Customize, as usual, and look for the buttons. And here's another button, Asteroids in Outer Ring. So you still have the Asteroids Watch nodes for what's in the inner ring. I can see Ceres is in the inner ring. We saw that before, 9 Libra 35. But then you can put a lot of asteroids in the outer ring. So if I click on asteroids in outer ring, uh, a window opens up here. 
uh, where you can select sets of asteroids. Uh, you can just click on these different sets and it will put the asteroids in there. If the asteroids, if there's too many to fit in the wheel, like here's one set of uh, 650 asteroids, another one with 404, you're not going to fit 600 asteroids in a wheel. I think you can fit up to 60 or 65 or something. Um, and then they're just not going to fit. So, you know, there's limitations to what you can do with wheels. But this is great. You've got them all here. Uh, look at all these asteroids in Libra. Oh, my God. So it's got to spread them all around here. Uh, you know, do, do the program just does the best it can to, to squeeze them together. Um, so it, it's, it's really nice. There they all are. Very readable and, and available to you. Okay, and I've got this used glyphs when available checked. So the ones with glyphs have them. Um, which I'll leave it that way for now. Uh, anyways, that's fine. I'll just cancel out of this. I haven't changed anything. Um, and there it is. And you'll notice the asteroids wheel has a, what you could call a legend or a key that tells you what these things are. So what is EUG? You know, you can go over here and, and find out that EUG is Eugenia. Okay, so, so that's great because otherwise you don't know what, what BER and BAM and PAM and ALE are. So here's a key. Very nice. There you go, an asteroids wheel. So you can play with asteroids. Just put them in the wheels. They'll show up if you do a progression or a solar return or whatever. And you and you select asteroids wheel. They're going to be there, uh, no matter what kind of chart you select. Okay, so that's chart wheels, putting asteroids in chart wheels. Going back to my uh, outline of what I'm going to do, I have finished the first topic. Um, so that's one thing you can do with asteroids. Another thing would be listings, um, especially if you have more than 60 asteroids. Maybe you want to know about hundreds of them, or even thousands. Well then, go to listing, and down here, planets or asteroids positions list, and you have these different um, kinds of listings you can produce. The My Asteroids list is the one I will show you now. Um, I'm not even going to be able to show you er all the asteroid features in Sirius, you know, it, would probably take it, you know, it would be too long, an hour or two or more. Um, so I can, um, you know, I'll just show you some of the basics here, things I think that are most important. The My Asteroids list is really nice, and that's the one most people use. Uh, again, you have sets of asteroids for whatever you want to do. Um, we've got a, the a, a typical list of asteroids that astrologer Demetra George uses, uh, 650. Um, it can take 5 or 10 or 15 seconds sometimes to calculate all those. Um, but let's go ahead and do it. And then you can sort whether you want it by zodiac position or alphabetical. You can do a sort. So if you do a 180 degree sort, you'll see conjunctions and oppositions. Uh, because, you know, Aries and Libra would be combined together. Uh, and you can decide if you want to display everything. And there's a few other options. Uh, about, again... Uh, options for using glyphs and so on, and how it's formatted. But that's the basic idea, and then you can customize the set and go in and add any asteroids you want. So I'll just click OK. It may take a while to calculate. It's going to go through and calculate 650 asteroids. Well, it didn't take it that long. Um, I might have calculated them earlier. Once you start calculating asteroids, it, it gets faster. Um, it depends on the speed of your computer, but there it is. 650 asteroids sorted by Zodiac. And then we put the planet in here with asterisks and capital letters so you can go to Jupiter and you can see that Jupiter is conjunct the asteroids Charles, Charlois, Peter, Alemania, Al Harmonia, Yates, etc. Um, so very handy. Tells you the longitude, latitude, speed, right ascension, declination, the asteroid number since I had checked all those columns. Um, yeah, so you can go down and, and look at all these things. I'm going to go down to her moon. There's her moon. Uh, now this is really interesting. Her moon at 9 Libra 07 is conjunct Orpheus at 8 Libra 55. Almost exact, you know, 12 minute orb. And incidentally, Orpheus is right near the ecliptic plane, 1 North 02 at the time she was born moving about a degree a day. Um, interesting. 
Well, she's a musician and a singer, and Orpheus, of course, is the god of music. That's curious. Um, so you can have fun uh, with these asteroids uh, and see what's going on. Also, in researching Tori Amos, because uh, I like to look at people a little bit, I brought up on Wikipedia some information. This is a Wikipedia article, and it says about her that by age five she had begun composing instrumental pieces on piano, and uh, she won a full scholarship to the Peabody Conservatory of Music, uh, which was later discontinued when she was 11 years old because she wanted to play pop music and she liked to do it by ear and improvise rather than read cheat, cheat music. But anyway, she's a child prodigy in music. So she's not just, you know, some pop musician who happens to just fit whatever uh, popular thing is is in vogue. She's truly a, mu a gifted musician, child prodigy uh, even. Um, so that's interesting, Moon Conjunct Orpheus. Um, uh, and the, I don't know. I, I don't want to get too much into the interpretation, but even the fact that the moon makes sense to me. All right, but anyway, I'm not going to get into all that. I just want to make a quick video about how to do asteroids. Interesting stuff. So you've got flexible listings. Um, you can put them in wheels, etc. What else can we do to be to interpret asteroids and work with them? Well, going back to my list of things, we might want to get some hints on the interpretation or or some information about this, like, I don't, you know, what is, uh, well, these are people's names, Larry, Maria, Prometheus, maybe I don't remember everything about Prometheus, or Ganesha, which, I don't know if that's Ganesha, the same as the Indian thing, or uh, Indian god, or something different, um, and so on. Anyway, you might, Sakajawiya, uh, etc. So, you might want to be able to get some information about these. And Sirius will do that for you as well. Uh, so let me close this window. So now we just see the wheel. And if you go to Interpretation, uh, Natal, and you click on Galactic Asteroids, etc. Here, and then English, there it is, Asteroids Report. And you select that. I've already selected it. I selected it before the class right there. Um, anyway, I'll click OK. Um, and these interpretations of asteroids will come up. This is included with series. It's not an optional purchase. So here's Asteroids Report for Tori Amos giving her birth data. And if I scroll down, it'll tell me what this is. It'll tell me about the report. Um, in this report, 1,425 asteroids are analyzed to see if they're a conjunct in zodiac longitude, uh, the planets within a one-degree orb. Um, so that's the way it's set up. And so if we go down... Uh, this is what she has. She has Sun conjunct Algunda and Brixia and so on. Uh, let's go down to the moon. It should show that Orpheus thing. So even with just a one degree orb, look at all these things. Raphaela, Rudra, Titania. Um, so th this description of the asteroids is incredibly well done. Um, this is not just something thrown together so that we can say what, you know, I'm one of the developers of Sirius, so, you know, so that we could say, um, well, you know, we have interpretations of asteroids by our program. This is really what gives you a good historical background. Um, in the Shakespearean play A Midsummer Night's Dream, Titania is the name of the Queen of Fairies. Her character rose from the English folklore descriptions of da 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 da. Uh, Shakespeare from Ovid's Metamorphosis. So you get this whole background to the name. Um, appeared way, uh, Goethe uses it, Tennyson, etc. Uh, and then, you know, just a sentence w may ascribe relevancy to notions regarding fairies, elves, and other nature spirits. Magical themes may pervade life. Well, that actually seems to fit pretty well. It's conjunct or sun with a 41-minute orb. Um, and this is done alphabetically, so after T we get to U, sun conjunct utopia, 5-minute orb. Um, and so then it talks about utopia. Yeah, you know you know what the word utopia means, but uh, did you know it was coined by English lawyer, scholar, and humanist Sir Thomas More, who lived from 1478 to 1535 and wrote a novel, Utopia, etc.? Maybe you do, but and you get the idea. Um, composite is it's a composite of Greek elements, da-da-da. So really very well done, 
background to all the uh, asteroids so you can you can really think about this. It's a fantastic resource for exploring what these things might mean. Some astrologers feel that the name of the asteroid is closely related to its meaning and, and that's basically what we've done here. Um, if the meaning of the, the astrological significance of the asteroid has nothing to do with the meaning well then this isn't that helpful but a large number of astrologers do feel that uh, it's not a coincidence how the asteroids were named. It's another resource uh, for those people who want it. Here's that moon conjunct Orpheus with 11 minute orb. Uh, so it talks about, you know, Orpheus, uh, who we know something about. Um, uh, uh, was a son of Calliope, beautiful voice, music of heroic poetry, anyway, uh, all that information. And he, Orpheus fell in love, with Eurydice, etc. So anyway, uh, another resource, a uh, way to get insights into the asteroids. So that's another feature, another way to go about working with asteroids and using them um, in your astrological work. So now I've covered three things, putting asteroids in chart wheels, listings, interpretation, and you can put them in transits, which is very useful if you are already using asteroids as an astrologer or researcher or student of astrology. You can put them in your transits. Um, and if you want to research it, it's a great way to see um, what would be going on. So let me show you that. Um, so we go to a Forecast, Timeline Format, and select the Transit to Natal. And then we can go to Customize Planets and Aspects. And then this window opens up for selecting planets. And here, again, these little buttons you may not notice, Select Asteroids. Uh, and for the transiting planets and the natal planets, you'll see it's listing some asteroids. Um, in the second column, Eris, Hygieia, Achilles. <clears throat> By default, these are the eight trans-Neptunian uh, hypothetical objects used in Uranian astrology. Apollon, Cronus, Apollon, Admetos, and I had, I had been in here customizing. But let's click on Select Asteroids and you'll see what happens. It shows the eight uh, objects that have been selected. Eris, Hygieia, Achilles, Eris, Hygieia, Achilles, etc., and again, the same idea uh, with a change asteroid. You can use either the Vita trans-Neptunian object or change to asteroid. Click on change asteroid, and then you get the same kind of window, same exact window we saw before, where you can type in the object, put it in there, and, and change it. You've got the idea of this. So for transits, you can put up to eight um, asteroids, um, you know, in a given listing, and you can do eight different ones in other listings. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. If we add Eris and Hygieia, Transiting and Natal, and we click OK, and we run her transits for a month, and click OK, uh, we will get uh, Transiting, Eris, oh, I've done a, uh, no, no, that's good. For a second I thought I saw, oh, I see what I did. I have customized this and I put in the transiting position and natal positions and the house positions, which, which are, you can do. Uh, you can put that in there. And so here we see that, um, let's pick one, here's like high, transiting Hygieia is opposite natal Neptune, on that's just the 10 there on March 10, and using the orb, uh, which tells us at the bottom what that orb is, probably one degree. We can see how long it lasts, a little over a week. Uh, so you get the idea. You can just, uh, it's going to have the natal. Here's transiting Venus square natal Hygieia on March 25th. Uh, Hygieia sextile the node, etc. Here's Hygieia square Saturn on the 31st of March uh, of 2014. So uh, that's another thing you can do. You can include uh, any up to eight asteroids, any asteroids in your transiting list. And this timeline format is the one that most people are using. Uh, a lot of the old-time astrologers like the listings, but this is getting increasingly popular. I've shown it in other tutorial videos because you visually can just see what's happening 
um, you know, rather than hunt and peck through a big, long, tedious listing. Uh, okay, so that's cool. So you can see all these different things you can do for working with asteroids. Put them in wheels, get ideas about interpretations, get some insight into the history and in mythology or whatever about that asteroid. Uh, work with it in your transits and progressions. Oh no, just transits. The These minor asteroids right now, if you want them in progressions, we just the chart wheel. But it's this listing here, we have so far only put them in transits. Something to do maybe in a future version. Uh, always more to do. Uh, but that's cool. We have all this stuff. And similarly, you can put the transits in a graphic ephemeris or a text ephemeris. So if you go up here to forecast and uh, you select graphic ephemeris, um, you, you can put the ast you can see the transiting planets in a graphic ephemeris and over here under ephemeris, you can select an asteroid's text ephemeris. Uh, and just get an ephemeris of it. So I've already selected the um, graphic ephemeris. I'll just pull it up here. I just clicked on it. It shows up in this additional module, and I can just click on it at the bottom of the screen to bring it up. But just to get through this tutorial more quickly, it's already calculated, and here it is. And there's the transiting positions. There's Eris in Aries, and Sedna is in Taurus. Um, this is for the year 2014. They move, these particular asteroids uh, move very, very slowly. Here's Ixion and Kwa'or. I'd selected five asteroids here in red. There's Varuna, Ixion, Kwa'or, and there's their transiting position. So we could see, for example, that in December 2014, uh, the fast-moving transiting planets Mercury, Venus, Mars all come in aspecting... Uh, becoming conjunct with Ixion and Kwa'or. So those are the kinds of things you could do. And you could put the natal chart planets in here horizontally and see when they cross, and you could do it 90 degrees instead of 360 degrees. I have a whole other tutorial on the graphic ephemeris, but what I want to show you here is you can put in uh, any of these asteroids in the graphic ephemeris, and also the text ephemeris, which I can, since I'm in the this module, the Kepler workshop module, I can just go right here, select text ephemeris asteroids, <clears throat> and there's an ephemeris. This is for January 2014, and Varuna, Kwa'or, Eris, Sedna, Ixion, daily positions. I can right-click, click on Edit Asteroids List, uh, type in the name of an asteroid here, uh, and, and add it to the list. Uh, I'll just click on Chiriclo, Add to Is. Curriculo, I guess is the proper way to pronounce that. Let's add uh, chaos. I'm just doing this quickly. I just added two more. I click OK. Click OK. And now I'm going to have those two additional asteroids added. Curriculo, I guess is the proper way to pronounce it. And chaos. Um, so you have an ephemeris. Um, you know, then you can just go forward to the next month. You can run it for a year. Whatever you want to do. Just like the, the planet ephemeris you have an ephemeris for any asteroid. So that's very nice. I often see discussions online, people saying, where is a certain asteroid? Does anybody know where Ixion is? And they give websites and stuff. Well, if you have serious, just call it up and uh, you've got an ephemeris. You can do a graphic ephemeris. You can put it in your chart. Uh, you can even, etc. You got the idea. All that stuff's available. All right, so I'm talking real fast, giving you ideas. And I've covered almost everything here. I've shown you how you can put asteroids in wheels, listings, get an interpretation, timeline format, an asteroid ephemeris, graphic ephemeris. You can also put them in astromaps and do research. I'll show you these last two things. If I go back to Sirius and I so select an astromap, I go to maps, astromap. Um, there it is, asteroid map. And then a button appears, select asteroid, and what aspects you want. And let's see, we've got Ceres, Pallas, Juno, Vesta, Chiron. And again, the same idea, where you've got a change button. So you can change these to any other asteroids. So I'll add Hygieia and Flora, whatever I want. And you can, you know, if you don't see what you want, you can hit change. You'll go to that same customizing window 
and add them and then you'll get the and you can also pick what aspects you want and if you want to include the regular planets, Sun through Pluto, I've got those all checked uh, you can also put in Black Moon Lilith and so on and I'll click done I'll just do conjunctions and oppositions changes saved, thank you, click OK, select astromap and there it is and I've got the planets as well as these asteroids so we can see that for Tori Amos she has Hygieia opposite the Ascendant going right up you know through here through Thunder Bay, Canada etc. Here's Neptune conjunct the Ascendant here's Pallas conjunct the Midheaven um, so you know all that's available um, Here's Chiron coming right in through here. Uh, so you can put asteroids, uh, any asteroid in your astromap and see where those lines are with whatever aspects you want to see. So you have all these things you can work with. And the last thing I'll show you is research. Um, I, probably most astrologers don't have the time to do research. You just focus on doing people's charts. But if you want to do research, it's very easy to do. You just click on the research button, which is this. Do the astro signature research. That's the uh, sort of all all purpose general one, astro signature, the first one. And then you can create an astro signature. I'll just create one. And I'll just call it uh, Eris. Suppose I want to research Eris. Um, click on make new astro signature. And now I've got my Eris for research, and I could say I want an aspect, sun. Moon and the asteroids are at the bottom. Um, is Eris here? It is. So I'll click it. I'll set the angle to conjunction. I'll set the orb to one degree. I can click update now if I want to. And I can read in my list Sun conjunct asteroid 2. Asteroid 2 is currently set to Eris. Uh, and then I can see, find out everybody who has Sun conjunct Eris within a one degree orb. Wouldn't that be cool? Um, it is cool. You can do it. Um, in fact, this summer I'm giving uh, an online lecture about the meaning of Chiron, where I ran the research and see who has Chiron. Really important. You'll, you, I also have another video on the importance of doing this, seeing the charts that are most extreme with something and how, why that's such an important way of, of analyzing rather than just looking at charts you happen to notice. Um, Anyway, so there it is. I could click uh, OK, Save Changes. And now I can run the research with, with any group. I've got musicians selected. I was in here playing around. Oh, you know what I'll do? I'll go in and customize this and change it to Moon conjunct uh, Orpheus. Well, Orpheus is probably not listed here. So what I could do is I'll just select some asteroid like this one theme is, and then go over here, oh, I didn't, I should have showed this to you anyway, I for, almost forgot. Again, you've got the customizing, where I go to rulers, uh, select asteroids, and the same idea, where I can select what asteroids I want, I'll change themis, and I'll type in Orpheus. Isn't that what I said I want to do here? Orpheus, check it, click OK, and now my 20th asteroid is Orpheus, I click done, it automatically updates it. So I can now see all the musicians who have Moon Conjunct Orpheus, just like um, uh, Tori Amos. I can click Begin Analysis, and now it's running through all the musicians in the database, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. You can see this counter going really fast. As it's going through hundreds of musicians, uh, I could narrow it down to just singers. If I'm curious about... Who else besides Tori Amos has Moon Conjunct Orpheus? And I might be curious to see if their musical style is similar. So it's it's just fascinating to go in here, notice things, poke around, be able to go into the research, see what's going. It's already up to 500, uh, going on 600 musicians. I don't know how many are here, probably not much more than that. And it will be done. There it is, and it's showing the results of the research. And, and there's Tori Amos, because she had the 11-minute orb. Um, she's right at the top. Tori Amos. Uh, bon Jovi has moon conjunct uh, uh, Orpheus, uh, even tighter, and, and so on. Uh, so anyway, you can go through, and then you can 
Elvis Presley does. And those are the only ones. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think. And then the rest are all zero because they don't have Moon Conjunct. Um, Orpheus. So you can see what interesting kinds of research you can do um, with this. Um, and maybe Orpheus doesn't interest you. Maybe you're more interested in Eris or Sedna. You can go through, run it through the database and see what's going on. So I am done. I'm at 35 minutes. I usually like to only go about a half hour. And going back to my PowerPoint, I've covered all the basic things I wanted to cover. I probably forgot some big major thing. This is just what I thought of uh, off the top of my head. Um, these are just things that occurred to me. Um, there are probably other things in the series I'm not thinking of. But at least this gives you some of the ideas of some of the ways you can go about analyzing and interpreting asteroids. Okay, well, almost 36 minutes. Uh, that's it for today, my friends. Uh, thank you for listening. God bless. Namaste.